Do you have something in life that when everything is going wrong that you can simply hold on to and it'll make you feel better? What's up guys, Jeff here from That Bold Life, your weekly encouragement to help you live a bold life for Jesus. So my daughter is two years old and her favorite game in the entire world is hide and seek. Now she plays hide and seek very interestingly because I don't think she completely understands all the rules. So she'll run off and hide and then she'll yell for me to come close a door behind her or do something like that. Or when she's supposed to be doing the seeking part, I tell her to sit somewhere and count and she actually walks out of the room looking for me while counting. But my favorite thing that she does is is while she's hiding, is once I find her, she then wants me to come into her hiding place with her and she just wants to snuggle up to me real, real close and she says, mommy coming, mommy coming. Even though there's a very good chance mommy has no idea we're even playing this game. But she thinks that someone else is coming after her so she wants daddy to climb down there with her and we just snuggle until she gets tired of waiting and I just sit there and enjoy the snuggles. But I noticed something very similar the other day uh, when a stranger comes up to her, someone she doesn't know as well, is she'll run up and she'll just cling to my leg or she'll cling to her mom's leg and and, and that she just gets real, real close and I, I started to think about it. Like yes, one part is a game and she knows no one is actually after hurting her, but the other part's real life and she's concerned about the other person that came. And Either way, in either situation, whether in game, in play, or in real life with real danger, she clings to the one that she knows is gonna protect her. She clings to the ones that she knows is always there, that will always protect her, that's always looking out for her, that's always protected her in the past, so she knows who she can go to. The reason I even started thinking about this is because I read in the Gospels this week, in Mark chapter four, it says this, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up shouting, teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? Now the first thing I see here is that these disciples are trained fishermen. They've pretty much been fishing their entire life and they've been fishing in the Sea of Galilee, which is the sea that they're crossing at this moment. They've been fishermen their entire lives. They've they've weathered storms their entire lives. They are trained. This is what they do. Jesus, if he is not God, he is he is simply a, a good spoken carpenter, right? Not to be blasphemous, but if Jesus is not God, that's what he is. He's a carpenter. So he does not have the expertise of being on the water. Why do they run to Jesus and not to Peter, the lifelong fisherman? Why do they go to Jesus? Well, they must have known something. They must have known something was different about this guy, about this rabbi, about this teacher, that very clearly they knew that they could go to him and that he would protect them, that he would watch out for them, that he would cover them. And and how do they know this? They didn't grow up in Sunday school and hearing all the fancy Christian stories and having Easter and Christmas parties. No, they knew this because they had seen it with their own eyes. That they had been in ministry. They'd walked hand in hand. They'd walked side by side with Jesus for years now. and, And they had seen what he could do and who he was and how much he cared and how much he loved. And they knew that in a moment of distress that they could go to him and that he would protect them, that he would watch out for them. Let's read on. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and waves obey him. Now what we see here is an amazing picture. It says that Jesus simply says, stop. I mean, it doesn't even say that he stood up to rebuke the waves. He just said, hey, stop. And then gradually over a long period of time, the, the wind and the waves, they died down as, no, it says suddenly, they stopped. Because you see, when creation hears the voice of its creator, it responds. When the world that God created with his voice, when the people that God created with his voice that he literally breathed lives into their depths, when we hear his voice, we respond. When creation hears the voice of its creator, it responds. 
and the creation responded when Jesus said, stop, be still. But these disciples, they, they went to Jesus in their time of distress, in their time of fear, in their time of need, like my daughter, when she is scared, they simply went and clung to Jesus and they said, we have nowhere else to go. You are the one who has protected us, that has watched out for us, that has been there. We've seen you heal blind eyes. We've seen you turn water to wine. We've seen you perform miracle after miracle. But more than that, we've seen that you care. Jesus, don't you care that we're going to drown? Of course he does. And he says the same thing to you and me. You see, because it's not who Jesus was, it's who Jesus is. Jesus was not a great teacher that used to exist and used to heal people and used to be there and used to care and used to love. You know, it's Jesus is an amazing God. And He does love and He does care and He is always there. That's who He is. We don't gather in buildings all around the country and all around the world every single week to hear stories about who He was. We go to hear about who He is and come to know and experience and love who he is and have a relationship with who he is not who he was because jesus died but then he resurrected he is still alive today he sits in heaven watching us he sends his holy spirit to comfort us to be with us but he still loves he's still there he's still prevalent he has not left you nor has he forsaken you regardless of your darkest times he is still there and maybe it's in your darkest times when you need to cling to Jesus the most that when something is coming your way that scares you or startles you or you're panicked or you're depressed or you're hurt or you're broken, it's in those moments that you need to find Jesus and you need to cling to Him. Cling to Him because He's the one who cares. He's the one who loves. He's the one who protects. That's the Jesus that we serve today. That's the Jesus I know wholeheartedly that I didn't know just six or seven years ago, that I was agnostic, I did not believe. But when I found Jesus, I found the true Jesus. Not the judgmental God who sits on a throne waiting to strike you down with lightning. No, I found a good, good Father who loves, who cares, who provides, who's seen your very flaws, your weaknesses, and your imperfections, and He loved you despite them. That He loved you so much that He knew everything you would ever do, and yet He went to the cross and He died on your behalf for no other reason than the love He has for you. That's the Jesus that I know. And I pray wholeheartedly and if that's not the Jesus you know, that you would meet him. That you would come to know him. That you would read his word. And you would experience who he truly is, not what you've heard about him. Not what you've seen in other Christians. But who he truly is. That's my prayer for you today. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Then go and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified every time I release a video. Guys, it would mean the world to me if you'd also leave a comment down below. Just let me know that you watched it, that it helped you in some form, in some way. Alright guys, love you. Alright, keep living that bold life.